in between. Mr. Idrisu, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning and thank you very much for the opportunity and to your esteemed listeners. We are, as a minority, concerned about Ghana, the potential of Ghana being declared a debt distress uh, country. And we are mindful of the fact that even the Minister of Finance, his own maiden budget statement to Parliament, was to point out what he described as the rigidities of the budget. Right. Interest uh, servicing, compensation, and uh, statutory payment. Boy, and therefore, the minority were compelled to write to an independent arbiter, the International Monetary Fund, Boy, to have a better understanding of a conflict in the thoughts of government right. and their inability to be forthright with the Ghanaian people. Mr. Just to hold your fire uh, for a moment, we would oh, give oh, the man. background to this so that we have the proper context when, you are, when we are entering into this discussion. But Mr. Driso has really summarized for us what the, the crux of this discussion will be like. The minority has written a letter to the IMF asking them to clarify whether or not the $2 billion arrangements that Ghana has entered with Sino Hydro as Chinese, well, with the government of China, I should say. Um, is, is it a loan or it's a barter? The finance minister, Ken Oforiata in the media budget review insisted this is a barter agreement between two countries, but the minority wants this to be classified as a loan. First of all, why is that clarification necessary? And going forward into what are the merits of their arguments? This argument took place in Parliament. We are going to the IMF. Why? Why now? We'll be answering all those questions today on the Super Morning Show. I'll give Ms. Mr. Idrisu just walked in. So I'll give him a moment to catch his breath. I'll play this quick message. And then when we come back, we delve into the issues. Stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. Oh, hello, oh, Ama. Long time, oh. Oh, I've been standing here knocking, sir. Where were you? Oh, I'm very sorry. I actually saw you in my cameras when you were walking in. But I was on a long-distance video call with a big cousin in the UK. How are you able to do that? Haven't you heard of the broadband service from Telesol? They offer fast speed with vast internet bundles to choose from and very affordable monthly rates. Wow, is that so? Yes, so. They offer both 4G and fiber broadband. Uh-huh. Go on, tell me more. And Telesol is full. Only Ghanaian. I'm rushing right away to contact them. Any more details? Yes, you can contact Telesol today for further details on 0303-975-342 or 344 or toll free on 0800-900,000 or visit www.telesol4g.com. Telesol 4G, just a touch. Super Morning Show Poops. And you're listening to the Super Morning Show with Daniel Daze. Live on Joy 99.7 FM. We are asking the, uh, the IMF to provide us with clarity. Obviously, looking at the perceived changes in the computation in debt and arrest, and to find out if that is in line with what was negotiated with the fund, and in line with best, internationally best accepted best practice. That is all what we are seeking for. Because clearly, um, from what they have presented to us as butter agreement, the evidence before us clearly shows that this is nothing but a debt. It's a loan. And we want to find out if indeed the fund is aware that this is a loan or a butter. Butter is the exchange of goods and services. It is not exchange of goods with cash. That becomes a trade. So obviously what they have presented to us is not butter, but a trade. And let us also be reminded that the bauxite revenues are government revenues. Mm. And so if you are to sell bauxite revenue and decide to use it for collateral for a debt, it should be recognized as debt since the revenue is government revenue. They are government revenues and cannot be re regarded as part of agreement. It is a debt. They should just do the right thing. You see, unfortunately, um, that is why Ghana is where we are. Um, if you are trying to do the right thing, people think it's about politics. Why is the government panicking if they, are, if, if they have nothing to hide? Because government is hiding. That is why they are so much panicking. They shouldn't panic. I think they should do what is right. 
We've insisted that as a minority, we will support the, uh, the government any day, any time, if they come to parliament and seek for a loan for the purposes of building infrastructure. We are a party that believes in infrastructure, so we'll support them. But any attempt to hide public debt and create impression that it is something that is not, certainly we will we'll fight against it. And that is why we are raising this cause. So that was Kezala to force in his minority spokesperson on finance, explaining in a nutshell what the minority's position is. However, Harun Edri Suhim is here. He would be giving us um, further and better particulars, if I may. And when I said in a nutshell, you have some difficulty. Said the Rizu. government is not forthright with the taxpayer Boy, and the Ghanaian people. You're in a hurry to do this, Mr. Rizu. the rectitude and resolve to be candid with the facts. Essentially, what is butter? It we'll, is a loan. We'll try and answer that they question. Are well. We'll try and answer that question well. And uh, whether we'll, we'll bring in a dictionary or we'll do something else. But we want listeners to have a proper context of this whole discussion. And so, Raymond Aqua yeah. is here with me. Raymond, in a minute, let's just know about this whole, what do we need to know about this whole Sino Hydro deal? So you do remember Boy, that um, government officials somewhere around the beginning of the year went to China. They were talking about some, is it 15 billion or so, big time money that was supposed to fix our infrastructure problems. And we've been discussing a gap of 1.5 billion virtually every year. That ought to be dealt with. No, many have complained, but this government had very little to show for when it comes to infrastructure projects and development, contrary to the promises he made along the line prior to campaigning and coming into office. So... I mean, to many, it was exciting to have heard the finance minister mention how this was going to happen and that $2 billion was coming this year. He stressed that. And that was supposed to do some road projects. He took his time, went through all of these road projects that were supposed to be the main projects to be undertaken under this project. So he did so. And then later on, they put before the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana some uh, an agreement. An agreement which was titled the joint memorandum to parliament by the minister for finance and the minister for roads and highways on the approval of commercial agreement between the government of ghana and sino hydro corporation limited an amount of up to 500 million united states dollars for the construction of priority road infrastructure projects phase one under the master project support agreement and this master project support agreement is what constituted the two billion dollar project in and of itself so the phase one was for the roads in this case and they are discussed that's going to be beyond this indeed if you go to even the master project support agreement which was and the next two day uh, what was presented to parliament it stipulates in 1.1 that in consideration of and subject to the other terms of this mpsa sino Hydro agrees to arrange for one or more loan facilities for payment of 85% of the construction and project cost of the priority projects, which aggregated construction and project cost is as a date of MPSA estimated to be two billion US dollars. That's the Sino Hydro Arrange project facilities. And proceeds to talk about how the rest of the 15% will also be dealt with. So this is, and let's not forget it, when this was put before Parliament, there was a huge debate on it. Right. The minority did raise the point that, no, 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 the classification of this was important and that government was seeking among other ways to use the back door to bring on board more loan facilities and yet not classify that as public debt. I mean, not why this will be important because we have a fiscal regime that is supposed to operate under the IMF arrangement. Okay. We also have a debt ceiling that we have agreed with the IMF to deal with in this particular case. Our completion this year is dependent on these targets. So if you do not do so, we may be able to meet our targets. If we do so, we may miss some of these targets, which would throw our, our, our program with them in some jeopardy, which may need an extension or something of that sort. So desires of the fact that government does not want any extension and want to live by the tenants of this agreement, if it is not any loan, if it's not added to your public debt, then it can be good for you. On the other side, they may have to renegotiate or go for further engagement to the IMF on this particular matter. So that's the crux of the issue so far. The so idea is that if we borrow beyond a certain point, yes, we'll get in trouble with IMF. We good. may have so to extend the program. You are agreed targets will not okay. be met. Okay. Okay. So that's where the difficulty is. And they stipulate specific uh, sections of not only what the minister said, so what they did, and I have seen that, 
in their statement. What they did is to compare what the minister said before Parliament of the Republic of Ghana and what the details of the agreement when it came to the same Parliament and the Finance Committee men. So some of the things I've okay. read to you are where they see the main. Wait, well, you calm down. The man is here to speak for himself. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Raymond, what a, a brilliant expose on this uh, subject. As a country beyond personal safety and security, the most important matter, particularly to Ghanaians and the private sector, is prudent management of the economy, and therefore we will support any effort of government as fiscal consolidation, which includes government demonstrating a superior debt management strategy. The best debt management strategy is to borrow responsibly. We are also as a minority well aware that Ghana has an infrastructure deficit of about two billion US dollars annually. And therefore, it's important that we further invest in infrastructure development to accelerate economic growth in order to address unemployment and to spare the private sector to contribute meaningfully to the development of the country. What the minority have sought to do is to expose the grand deception of government that indeed they are borrowing and they lacked the rectitude and resolve to declare to the Ghanaian people and Ghanaian taxpayer that indeed there would be mm. additional tax burden mm. of $2 billion. Don't forget, it has consequence on the payment of the interest uh, burden and it has consequence even on computation of our per capita income. Okay. So we're compelled to seek clarity from an independent arbiter because when we ask, government said, no, this is not a loan, even though, as usual, speaking with a double tongue, if you look at the master facility agreement, the annex that Raymond referred to, Sino Hydro makes a commitment to loan. Now, if it's not a loan, where from arrangement fee? There's an arrangement fee and there's an interest component of it. The Finance Committee of Parliament met, and in their words, they said this will not add any additional burden to the debt stock of government. That is practically impossible. So I believe that our action is uh, to demonstrate to the Ghanaian people that we are vigilant and we need to keep government in check. And at this moment, there is no institution better place to do that than the IMF if they shared the right. facts and clarified the issues. So I think that Ghana should just mm. ignore the propaganda of government that uh, NDC minority is sabotaging. To what gain? Right, and that, that's uh, Harry Naibisu, he's my oh, leader, and he's been canvassing his position there. Kojo Opon Kroma is Information Minister Designate, and he's joined us in studio as well. Mr. Opon Kroma, good morning. Good morning, it's a morning of surprises. Oh, it's a know. morning of surprises, I must say. Okay, so I would give uh, Mr. Opon Kroma oh, a, a moment to come in here. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Idrisu, you have been mentioning how this has implications on our tax burdens... As, as, a, as a people. And therefore, you owe it for the oh, people like to know that you are borrowing. Shed more light on and that for me. In 30 seconds. Two billion uh, United States dollars will essentially add to Ghana's debt stock and elevate the interest payment regime of government, which will further throw the economy of the country into distress. Now, when we sought answers from government, they treated this as some Kobe, Momoni, or Jende uh, tomato. How will it add to Ghana's uh, debt stock? Uh, as a, how will it add to Ghana's yeah. debt stock? How it how, uh, implants it? There's an 85% interest regime of a loan. And then to appreciate it better, uh, when they appeared before parliament, they invoked Article 181 of the Constitution, which is on loans. And more importantly, Section 55 and 56 of the Public Financial Management Act, Act 921, which is on loans. Yet, they somersault to say that this is not a loan, treat this as a barter. Nobody 
is against uh, government uh, borrowing. But I'm sure because they bastardize borrowing and bastardize the NDC for borrowing, they have an obligation to shy away from the reality. We know, we've been in government right. before, and every government has three vehicles to which to fund its development projects, particularly infrastructure. You either up or raise taxes, or you borrow, okay. or you rely on public-private partnership. Okay. Beyond ESLA, the energy sector levies, this government has not demonstrated any superior debt management strategy. And they themselves admittedly, even in the 2017 and 2018 uh, 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 budget, to quote and paraphrase the Minister of Finance, says that ESLA have made a significant contribution to dealing with some of this legacy debt. So essentially, you, you, you have we just want government right. to be forthright <clears throat> that it is borrowing and that is borrowing from China, Hydro China. Don't forget, the NDC have been to China before. Okay. And therefore, anybody, the loan anybody, uh, anybody, Atuabo Gas is, is, is a product of yeah, Ghana China that's, collaboration, that's which is also making significant contribution to the energy sector. And therefore, butter. That's not an exchange of tomatoes for oranges, and I think that government should just. Mr. Uh, Dries, you, 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 you mentioned oh, Article One Eight One. You, you mentioned Article One Eight One. Absolutely. Clause Five of Article One Eight One says this article shall, with the necessary modification by Parliament, apply to an international business or economic transaction to which the government is a party, as it applies to a loan. Uh, Does can that you, mean that? Can you read One Eight One One? Oh, yes, I have read, one. Read that one, one to the public. Let them appreciate it. That one it. says Parliament by resolution start from one eight supporting... One. Uh, let start me, no, no, no. no read let, 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 and let, tell 181.1 before you come to 1. I'll come to 5. I'll respond Let's to go you. to 1811 one, so that we have that proper context. Parliament may by resolution supported by the votes of a majority all met the members of Parliament authorize government to enter into an agreement for the granting of a loan out of any public fund or public account. So, Article 181 um, basically spells out what Parliament must do and what government must do. Irrespective when it's of going to, a loan. Allow me to finish. When, when it's going to Parliament to allow Parliament to approve a loan. And then when it comes to Clause 5, it tells, it says that the article, as in the procedures here, shall, with the necessary modification by Parliament, apply to an international business or economic transaction to which government is a party as it applies to a loan. So, it says use this... These, this criteria, if you are if you are using it for any other to the, transaction, to the extent that, that transaction are, may not be to a the extent that I mean, to the extent that you are saying that this is not oh, a loan, I am not. I have not said this is not a loan. I'm just pointing you to Article One Eight One Five. It is a loan. Uh, if you appreciate oh, even constitutional law, read the head notes of One Eight One. It's on loans, and I further added at Section Fifty Five and Fifty Six of the Public Financial Management Act. And therefore, government should just stop this grand deception and be forthright with the Ghanaian people. They should be candid that we are borrowing and we'll support them to borrow to build infrastructure, but not hide under the guise of butter and also strongly, deceptively and uh, unfailingly questionable state that they uh, are not going, this is not going to add any additional burden to the debt store. Don't forget, are we to understand as, a member, that as a member of the IMF negotiating team in 2015, we got the three-year ECF deal with the IMF. And I do know that there are ceilings to borrowing because the you IMF that is point, mindful of Ghana being declared in right. distress as 70% of GDP borrowing right. is essentially not the way to go. So, uh, where the 1815, Parliament has not even acted on it. There is a Supreme Court ruling which obliged Parliament. So, read, read. It says, Parliament shall, with the necessary modification. Yeah. There was some attempt under Speaker Do Ajaho with uh, Mareta Brew as Attorney General uh, with uh, President Mahama working together to do this modification, to respond to it, so that contracts of that nature can come under international economic transaction. But a loan is a loan. They cannot okay. change the Leopard skin. Okay. Uh, let me come to Mr. Kojo Oponkroma, uh, Minister of Information Designates. This is the first time you're coming here, Mr. Oponkroma. So I, I believe congratulations are in order. Uh, well, thanks. Great. So, um, your response then to what the minority is saying? You're saying that, look, it's just semantics. You call it a batter, but what it really is, is a loan. Uh, let me start by saying good morning to um, uh, my senior, the Honorable Harry Nydris. So good congratulations, morning. Minister. Thank we you. look forward to 
you appearing before our committee and then we take you to plenary and see <laughs> what the Parliament of Ghana uh, would want. Like but essentially, it's a shock. A shock. Already, you allow him to. You allow him to continue. And, uh, this. Good morning to your listeners um, as well. And I think as 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 we start, it's important to say that no. Um, government has not said, in fact, this is the first time that government is responding to this action by the um, minority. And I'm doing so because uh, as I was listening to you, um, I had uh, my senior appear in the studio and, uh, you know, make some comments on, on, on the subject. And I feel that um, we're compelled also to respond. So government is not uh, already in this matter. They have, uh, may I say, proceeded with an action and I think um, already the action that they've taken is beginning to catch up with them, and that's why uh, they are feeling <laughs> pushed to respond to it. Now, first of all, the view of the administration is that Boy, this nice. action, this action that they've taken, and we work with the minority in good faith in Parliament, but this particular action, this exercise of, may I say, Nicodemusly writing to the IMF, trying to cue them or nudge them to stop this transaction at a time when Parliament is on recess and Parliament has already what passed. What is the good thing was when we no, copied Mr. the letter Mr. Rizzo, to Mr. Rizzo, the Minister please. for Allow him to finish. Allow no, him to finish. But no, no, you, you allow him to finish. If you read the letter, you would have the opportunity the to finish. Mr. Rizzo, Senior, please. if you give me the opportunity to um, make my submissions, I listen to you fully. When Parliament is on recess and you deliberately do this, it is an action that the administration finds disappointing <laughs> and it smacks of bad faith. Indeed, as I have been following social media commentary on the subject last night and this morning, some of the expressions that people are using, uh, that this amounts to stabbing our motherland in the back, this, uh, this, this, this action is unpatriotic. And the reason for which government finds this action disappointing is simple. The arguments that uh, my colleague Donald Harun Adisu makes here this morning in your studio are not new arguments. They tabled all of these arguments in Parliament. And the parliament of Ghana, that represents the people of Ghana, had an opportunity to interrogate it and come to a conclusion to pass a resolution that the agreement, the MPSA, that had been signed between the government of Ghana and Sino Hydro of China, and what it said it was essentially that this was a bad agreement, was what it was, and the parliament of Ghana approves of it. Now, I'll go into a few of the, uh, a few of the substantive matters. What is a loan and what is a barter arrangement? You can pick a dictionary. You can Google and find out the difference between a loan and a barter agreement. Now, the reason for which they try very hard to say that this um, is a loan is the fact that we came to Parliament, and the memorandum says that we are here in Parliament under Article 181. The moment we say we are here in Parliament under Article 181... It wasn't just Article 181. No, we said in, in the memorandum... 56 yes, we know. ...of the Public Financial Management Act. Very well. But I'm starting from the first part. Okay. Because 55 and 56 in our view are procedural. But 181 is what we stated in the memorandum that we are here on the authority of Article 181. The moment we said that, our friends in the minority quickly went to 181, 1 and 2, of course, which deals with loans, and made the argument that, ah, then it's a loan. And I remember I was involved in the debate that we drew the attention that, no, we are here on Article 1815, which says that the procedures that you have to go through when you are uh, going for a loan, an international loan of that kind, are the same procedures that you have to follow when you are going for an international economic or business transaction. So we are here under 1815. And if I just may read 1815 for the benefit of your listeners, this article, which is 1815, with the necessary modifications by Parliament, applies to an international business or economic transaction to which the government is a party, as it applies to a loan. So the same procedures you go through when you are going for a loan are the same procedures you go through when you come for an international business or economic transaction. And that's why we came to Parliament. Mr. Ha Number two. Mr. Adriso argues that these modifications have not been made, these necessary modifications have not been made officially by Parliament. It doesn't and so it stop, cannot. It didn't stop Parliament from approving international economic transactions uh, in the previous Parliament. It's the same article that has been used to approve international economic transactions of, Such of, as? of, of, of various kinds. You can go for ZAKEM, you can go for... Um, all of the other ones that sometimes even went for arbitration. They are international economic transactions, properly so-called, and it comes under Article 1815. Uh, Secondly, they made the argument that because the document says that debtor and creditor, once you mention debtor and creditor, then you are talking about a loan. And we explained to them that a debtor is an entity that owes a debt, one who is indebted. 
I may be in. The, if we go to court today and you lose a case and you are um, a judgment debtor, it doesn't mean you've taken a loan. A judgment creditor doesn't mean he has lent money necessarily to somebody. So the use of the word debtor and creditor in the document is the open definition of those words. An entity that was a debt or who is in, indebted, an entity that has a claim on the service of another is a creditor. And we explained all of these ones to them in Parliament. So for you at this time when we finished and Parliament has passed a resolution to this effect, you know the President is just a few weeks away from going to China to uh, complete what's left on, of, of, of the transaction and then you uh, uh, write this uh, uh, Nicodemusly to the IMF is something that smacks of bad faith. Now, number two, the real objective of the minority is not an innocent asking of questions. I was listening to uh, the, Honor uh, the Honorable Harina Idrisu very well, and he says that there's a potential for debt distress. They are compelled to write to an independent arbiter to have an understanding of the conflict in the thoughts of government. I was transcribing his words. Let nobody be deceived. This action by the minority has a real motive behind it. They may try to argue that it's an innocent request for information, but it's not. It is indeed an attempt to nudge the IMF to object to the transaction. Because indeed, if you want further and better particulars, let's just assume for the purpose of argument that there's something about this transaction that you are not clear of even after Parliament had finished this debate and had passed this resolution. Who is structuring the agreement? It's the government of Ghana. So if you want further and better particulars, today, you feel should have come to the government. today the constitution gives you the right to write to the... And I know that the minority has written to the finance minister requesting information on other things. Mm -hmm. If you want further and better particulars, you write to the government of Ghana saying that perhaps I want clarification on X or Y or Z. But when you know that you have already negotiated a deal with the IMF, which is going to end this year, and you literally have some caps on it, and you write to the IMF that they should consider this as a loan, Indeed, they describe it, I have a copy of the letter here, they describe it as a misguided transaction and an illegality and that it is a loan and literally urge the IMF to consider it as such. You are nudging the IMF to essentially tell Ghana as a nation. That's your interpretation of the letter. But that is exactly what they are doing. That's By, exactly... In your view. That is exactly what in they your are view. doing. Because, listen, if indeed you are concerned about the potential for debt distress, do you know that uh, debt to GDP ratio as of December 2016? It had crossed 70%. That was when we were in debt distress. We have brought it down now to about 69%, and we are hoping to go down further. Okay. You are the one, I'm coming, I have a few points to go to. You are the one who now rise to the IMF ostensibly to tell them that they should consider this one as a debt, and therefore do what? Stop the transaction. Now, initially, we could have believed that this was a normal exercise of minority functions. But now, with what is beginning to happen, the administration is beginning to form a certain view that what our friends in the minority seek to do is to tie our hands behind us or get the IMF to um, uh, perhaps say that, well, they won't go ahead with this um, uh, transaction or they won't uh, look favorably upon this um, transaction. As it stands now, this transaction, as we have argued in Parliament, etc., and if you go to the Master Project Support Agreement, it is clear that they will build $2 billion worth of infrastructure for us and will pay back with $2 billion worth of bauxite proceeds. We have been very clear with that one. If we say, and he makes reference to things in the um, document like arrangement fees and um, interest. It's true there in the document. But again, if you read the document, the document says clearly, and if you go to paragraph 2.1, let me read that for the benefit of your listeners. The financing terms and conditions under which Sino Hydro will arrange the Sino Hydro ar uh, arranged project financing will be subject to the mutual agreement of the parties. What that means is that Sino Hydro is raising their own funding to prosecute this transaction. But we don't want to sit here in a situation where Sino Hydro goes and comes back and tells us that they arranged that funding at a rate of 20%. Of course, that will undercut how much roads we are going to get. So we have a transparency clause in this that says that whatever they are doing, we must have an opportunity to see through it. Whatever rates that they are um, underwriting, we must have an opportunity to see through it. 
so that in the end, we don't end up being shortchanged. That is the only reason for which you see these elements of um, okay. their arrangement fee, etc., in this transaction. So, indeed, if our friends want information, we have information you feel they should available have come to, to you. them. And you we can still make that information to available to All right. them. Not um, this route. You're still listening to the Super Morning Show oh, on yeah. 99.7 FM. It's 27 minutes to the top of the hour. I'm here in the studio with Harry Nedriso, Minority Leader, and Kojo Pongkroma, Information Minister Designate. I still have a few more questions, particularly for Mr. Opon Nkrumah, but we'll take these important messages when we come back. I'll allow Mr. Drisu to um, respond to what has been said and then we'll come back. Stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. It's a new day. I want you to first think big, not small. Think of how great we can be when we work together. Together, we can ensure that our hard work will provide a better future. Together, we can provide a foundation for you and your business to succeed, regardless of its size. Together, we can create opportunities for all. Bank with us today and let's journey forward together. Forward together. Cow Bank, forward together. Blow the candles, sound the trumpet, and scream! Media is 50! Media, your number one air conditioner and appliance manufacturer, is 50 years old. 50 years of top-notch quality, and we're celebrating it big. Starting from 15% discounts on appliances from any media showroom or authorized reseller. Join the celebration of Media at 50. We have amazing home appliances and great discounts. Tabletop fridges starting at 499 Ghana CDs. Four banana gas cookers starting at 799 Ghana CDs. Chest freezers are also starting at 799 Ghana CDs. Blow the candles, sound the trumpet, and scream! And so many appliances for you to choose from. One so much, oh dear. Remember, it's a celebration. It's media at 50 big sales on appliances. Visit a media showroom or authorized reseller now. Or call us on 0503 400 600. It's the media at 50 promotion. Terms and conditions supply. The other day, as I was in my kitchen preparing my special jollof made with Lily right for my family, I heard the knock at the door. It was my mechanic. Instead of calling me to pick my car, he bought it himself. I said, Cho, he said, Fo. I said, Take the car back. I will come and pick it myself. I said, Turn off the fire from under the Lily jollof. There was another knock at the door. It was my neighbor. I said, Neighbor, neighbor. He said, Fo. My dog has jammed your wall again, oh. I said, don't be silly. You don't have a dog. My wife and kids came home and we saw that he enjoyed. So, it was my pastor. He said, bless you. I said, bless you too. He said, did he come to church on Saturday? I said, I chose better. Why are you coming to tell me this on Wednesday? Having to fend off visitors at mealtimes because of Lele's tasty aromatic rice? Celebrate every mealtime by sharing with friends and family near or far. Lele. Tasty food, happy family. Acho, this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. The Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, in collaboration with the Ministry of Trade and Industry and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, presents Ghana Industrial Summit and Exhibition 2018 under the theme International Partnership for Value-Added Industrial and Local Content Development from the 18th to the 20th of September at Accra International Conference Center. GISE provides massive strategic networking opportunities for local and international participants, plus an interactive knowledge platform of stakeholders and players in various sectors of industry. Sponsors GNPC, Rosatom, VRA, Deloitte, Newmont Ghana, Republic Bank, GCB Bank, Baroque Ventures and Back Press. Media Partners, Joy Business, Graphic Communications, BNFT and Ghanaian Times. For inquiries on exhibition space and conferences, call 0244-933-106. Be a partner to drive in Industrial growth. Tell her what be your thing. Stand big, Diana. Brian, you have a beard. You're a say, I My body was your thing. Know your thing. You fall, do your thing. My body was your thing. Know your thing. You fall, do your thing. My body was your thing. Know your thing. You fall, do your thing. Stand big, bang, up.
better watch my moves. You are playing with a champion. You are not concentrated. Too much for Hala, my brother. Tell me about it. How could he even leave chop money with my wife this morning? And you still want six children? Why not? My father had ten. Yeah, it's hard for all of us, but I manage better. With your two children? Yes, and I am saving and keeping them in school. You couldn't afford even trot trot fare. Hey, so you <laughs> want to insult me as well? <laughs> yeah, oh, please come. Is, is there a problem? Please. Okay, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm not feeling well at all. So is the baby coming? Not yet. Okay, I'll go back to the taxi station then. Mr. Begum, Becky says she has been talking to you. About what? Family planning. She wants a break after this baby. I've told her. I want six children. She has two more to go. Kwame, how is your wife? Not good. The nurse said she needed a break after this baby. Please allow her for the sake of her health and your family. Let me call her now. Hello? Yeah. Please take me to the hospital. Thankfully, Becky was fine. Yao Beku agreed to go with her to the family planning clinic. The nurse went through a range of family planning methods. Implants for up to 5 years, IUD for up to 10 years, and other short-term methods. IUD? Yes, we can try it for 5 years. Agree. Oh, I'm so glad we came. Yao, you're back. Yes, I'm back. My wife just delivered a bouncy baby boy and I dropped them at home. I have decided to practice family planning and space my children. That's great news. Hip, hip, hip. Good life. It's an everyday thing. This is brought to you by Ghana Health Service, USAID and Partners. Go. Now, so many reasons for me to be thankful When I cast my mind back, oh God, I'm grateful Send me cry, baby, I'm free, no one was helpful All I had was to see the in a dream in my team But now we be balling, we be jamming every day Hit make a add aroma, me too, I get 100k Plus a record deal, Charlie had work, beat pace And I shows after shows, I set the place of pace My dream was legit, all I needed was a push One of the curl songs, the Jennifer Lomote architect Kitty, the auto hit maker And the multiple award-winning rock star, Kwame Eugene Then, Ghana's authentic and most rewarding music show beacons empty and hit maker season seven download the hit maker app from google play store to register follow the prompts and stand the chance to win a whooping 100,000 ghana cities recording deal send your comments on empty and hit maker apps at empty and hit maker on twitter and facebook or whatsapp us on 0551 300 000 empty and hit maker seven rule the mic everywhere you go mtn Welcome back to the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. It's 18 minutes to the top of the hour here. I am Daniel Dazi here with Haruna Idrisu, Minority Leader of Parliament, and Kojo Opon Krumah, Information Minister Designate. We're talking about some agreements that Ghana has entered with China. We are going to give them bauxite and they are going to give us roads, railways, and other infrastructure projects. Two billion dollars involved. Is this a loan or it's a barter? What is the effect on you, the average Ghanaian? What money are you going to pay on it? We are trying to unravel all of these issues today, so help us. Uh, send us in a text, send us in a tweet, send us in a WhatsApp message, send us in a Facebook post. 0244-340-437, 0244-340-437 at Joy997FM. 
Africa is full of potential. People are getting things done. Businesses are on the rise and APSA Group is tapping into this can-do spirit. As one of the largest companies listed on the GSE Top 40 Index on Africa's largest stock exchange, APSA Group delivers award-winning expertise to enable people and businesses to realize their possibilities daily. APSA Group proudly serving Ghana as Barclays. For more, visit www.apsa.africa. The Buzia Institute for Rural and Democratic Development, BIRDD, and the entire Buzia family wish to invite the general public to the 40th anniversary lecture celebrating the legacy of Dr. Kofi Abrifa Buzia. Join us on Tuesday, 28th August 2018 at 3pm at the Accra International Conference Centre as we celebrate the life of Dr. K. A. Buzia and the values he stood for. The special guest of honor is His Excellency Nana Adudam Open an ADB account today, send your name and account number to your relations abroad, ask them to use MoneyGram direct to account service and receive money from your relations in your account in minutes. With MoneyGram direct to account service, there is no PIN code Wahala. You can access your money on all ATMs in Ghana or send it to any mobile money wallet using ADB mobile banking app or star 767 hash. Visit our Facebook website or call our hotline 0302-210-210 for more ADB. B. Truly, a Greek and more. Now, Airtel Tigo is giving you a great deal that will make you talk for free all day. Simply top up with five Ghana cities or more between the hours of 12 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. today and get free time to talk sa with all your Airtel Tigo numbers. Reload and enjoy the freedom to keep talking sa on all on, only on Airtel Tigo, the network that gives you the most. When them say we have to pay for the oxygen we breathe. Let me come back to my guest in studio and we left off with Mr. Paul Nkrumah. We'll come back to Mr. Haruna Idrisu. A number of issues have been raised. You want to respond to them. Also, that yes, question yes. on um, um, the, in, the burden on the taxpayer, how much the Ghanaian will have to pay wait. in terms of interest and what have you. Go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Designate for Information. This is a copy of my letter. The words you use, find them in it for me. Which one and is we that? We said it was an illegality. Uh, those words you use, none. I will. No, no, I, no, no, it's expression. there. Senior, and I say, this, this is my letter. This is your cover letter, and then you have an attached document. No, this is my letter. Yes, but you have an First attached of all, document. I say, this is my letter. Then, two, Nicodemus. What is Nicodemus when the letter, you have your copy? I do, I have the letter it. here. I have the letter uh, here. Uh, uh, that is so, it's copied to the Minister for Finance. So, how can you describe this as Nicodemus? It's not a midnight witchcraft letter. We formally, <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you wait for we Parliament formally, to go on recess and we throw formally this wrote Mr. Kuma, and copied, allow what you are doing. And copied allow the ahead. Minister for Finance. And indeed, you can check. Right, it's 40 minutes to the top of the hour here on the Super Morning Show. We're listening to Haruna Idrisu. And you can Mr. check. Idrisu, on your points. Mm. You can check. When, we, when the government closed the year on 2017, I wrote formally to the Minister for Finance for some information from the Bank of Ghana on how the year closed. I'm yet to have a formal response to that letter. I'll make a copy available to you. So, for my colleague to describe this as uh, Nicodemus, it's the intransigence. They insist it's better, and we insist it's a loan. And does it let me quote? I'm holding the media review mid-year fiscal policy review of the 2018 budget statement economic policy presented to parliament 19 july 2018 by minister for finance honorable ken Ofuriata, and then read this mr speaker i would like to assure this august house that the two billion worth of infrastructure to be provided by sino hydro will not add to the debt stock so the quagma that we are seeking as a minority to resolve is whether this two billion will increase the debt stock for Ghana or not. And whether an additional increase in the debt stock will not occasion additional burden for interest payment by government okay. on behalf of the taxpayers of Ghana. So you are seeking and to have we, those questions answered? Absolutely, because the Ministry of Finance and Government of Ghana no. have failed to provide reasonable and satisfactory answers. So now, and we have not seen... Ten. We have not seen a superior debt management strategy. I say I'm reading from mid-year fiscal policy review. This is what the minister stated 
to parliament. And we are simply saying that you owe the Ghanaian people transparency and credible information and sharing it. We've been to China before. Don't behave as if you are the only <laughs> government that uh, Ghana has that. ever had. We haven't said We've that. We've borrowed from we China said before. That, and that. indeed, we said that. I pointed it out to them, uh, Bui, under President Kufuor, mm -hmm. to add the 400 megawatts of electricity. It was laid in parliament. That agreement was a loan. Yes. I drew their attention to it. Then you are running away no, but that was a totally from, different structure no, from this one. Good. Uh, you see... Totally different structure. Oh, do you understand your own butter? Yes, in, we do. In Bui, in, yes. in Bui yes. cocoa yes. was used as, as butter. Collateral. As collateral. No, cocoa was used as collateral. So here, who is, which is your collateral? Bauxite? No. Here, bauxite is you not collateral. It's not. No. It's not. It's then not. you don't understand. Right. 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 Gentlemen, I gentlemen, do. gentlemen. What if I just made no. No. He asked me to um, read from his letter and show him where he had used those words. I'm reading from paragraph 5. This is a document. Issues of concern emanating from the transaction between government of Ghana and Sino Hydro as presented by the minority in Parliament. He has a copy here. Read paragraph 5. It says that by this misguided butter agreement, this is what they wrote to the IMF, Ghana will exchange refined bauxite with two billion worth of infrastructure, including roads, bridges, interchanges, hospitals, housing, and rural electrification to be provided by Sino Hydro Group Limited of China. They first of all acknowledge that this is an exchange of these infrastructure projects for bauxite. And then they tell the IMF that this is misguided. Go to paragraph 10. That's my, my last point. My and then question was not paragraph misguided. 10. He said, I uh, said it was illegal. It is there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Paragraph 10. I'm coming to that one. Following from paragraph 7 and 8, we will gladly want to draw the attention of the Honorable Minister to the fact that his so-called barter oh, agreement yes. is a loan and must be treated as such. Hence, he will be engaging in an illegality. Absolutely. If it, this is what he's so, writing to the fund. Uh, okay. So these are not the words. That's yeah, the been, words that's in the letter they have written to the Those sections have been written, Mr. Ponkum, I think. That's it. You yeah. reminded oh, him of section 55.1 and 56.1 of the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921. Parliament is respectively invited to consider and approve the underlisted agreements in accordance with Article 181 of the Constitution. So if we couldn't find answers from government, where else could we be? You haven't asked government. You we haven't. copied you the letter. No, you, could have you wrote to the, the IMF. And, and copy that. You. And I'm saying, if you I wrote, wrote, answers, you I wrote to the Minister for Finance. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. I wrote to the just Minister moment. for Finance at the close of the year on the Bank of Ghana transactions 2017. for the 2017. Yes. How you close the year. Yes. You know, it ran into a weekend. Akin to what happened in 2016. I needed some numbers to reconcile. So you wrote to the when Bank of Ghana? And to the Minister for Finance. Mm -hmm. As I sit here, I have not had any formal responses from any of them. And I'm saying that the minority shares no regret in asking for further and okay. additional clarification from an independent arbiter whether or not the two billion dollar US dollar being sought by government will add to government's public debt and occasion additional tax burden in respect of debt servicing obligations of government on okay. behalf of the taxpayer, Mr. that Mr. clarification we will seek today and we will seek to let me let me let me let me ask this question, Mr. Ponko, a moment. Let me ask this question. I'm reading from. Um, paragraph 4 of your letter to the IMF he says we have identified a number of legal and technical issues that explicitly make the transaction alone beyond the um, the basis of article 181 and sections 55 and 56 that's that's you can call that was taken to parliament that's the finance minister based on to take to parliament have you found anything in your reading of the agreement to suggest to you that the Ghanaian would ha would be have to pay anything other than yes, the box that is there, delivered. There is an interest regime of 2.5 percent to 3.3 percent uh, LIBOR. On who? Uh, uh, wait, that's a commitment. Boy, and he's asked a question. And there's also an arrangement fee. And there's also in this document a commitment by Sino Hydro. Read page two, and I just read it for you. Scope and subject matter of the MPSA. In consideration of 
in consideration of a subject to other terms of this MPSA, Sino Hydro agrees to arrange for one or more loan facilities. Uh-huh. So even when Sino, agree, Sino Hydro says loan, they are still arguing. No, that Sino Hydro is and I've given you a loan facility. I've given you that. Wait, wait. I've, Mr. Um, Mr. But, but it says Mr. Adrisu, for payment of 85% of the loan. Who is taking that loan? Of of who, is taking that loan? Mr. who is uh, taking that loan? If I, if I may, Mr. Pongo, who is taking the loan? I have seen in this document, there is a creditor and there is a debtor. And I want to go exactly as to who is a creditor and who is a debtor in this transaction. There is a burden to the government of Ghana. Nothing more. They cannot offer any better explanation that they are not going for a loan. We will not accept it. We just <laughs> want the people of Ghana to be apprised of it. I mean, it's just like I made up no, that. Go to page two. It's here. That's it. Look at it. Policy, uh, interest rate, and fees during repayment period six months. USD LIBOR plus two point eight plus three point three BPS uh, uh, within three hundred sixty. Days during repayment period, financing, management fee, cost fees and expenses. There is repayment uh, period and others. And then, uh, that's it. This is it. Okay. The Republic of Ghana represented by the Minister of Finance, debtor. And then, uh, creditor, Sino Hydro Corporation Those are the obligations Limited. Of Sino Hydro no, you are reading. this is party's concern. No, this is, I'm not I've reading from my head. You. It is from if your I just document. May explain to you. In any case, that is, let me go to, to let me go to Mr. Ponkuma with this question. Right, um, <laughs> this is not the only deal that China is having with an African country. I want to read with you uh, the opinion of Baker McKenzie, which is. Um, a, a law firm in the USA and IJ Global, a leading trade publication for infrastructure projects. It says here that almost half of the $19 billion of China outbound loans poured into infrastructure <laughs> projects in sub-Saharan Africa since 2014 were made in 2017. Um, there is another... Um, Be- Beijing's cumulative loans to Africa since 2000 amounted to $124 billion. Um, I'm going to quote China Africa Research Institu- Institu- Initiative at Johns Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University of Advanced Ste- International Studies in the United States, forgive me, an associate researcher there, Janet Eo. She says that Chinese loans are channeled to African government and state-owned enterprises via a complex development finance matrix of Chinese banks, companies, and contractors. The transactions don't always involve the, the disbursement of absolute cash sums. Yeah, so it says that China Can has I just been doing conclude? transactions so with Africa. Come in. Okay, you so whilst you were reading, I was wondering whether I could substitute butter for loans. In your words, Boy, as you read. So it is a loan. Now, two, my colleague mentions patriotism. Were you not in this country when the new patriotic party questioned the loan rule infrastructure development for the Western region to build an additional uh, port for this country? So where was patriotism? at the time, that today we are questioning uh, our quest to seek for better particulars, convinced that it is a loan that you continue to call better. And then, uh, that's it. Uh, to interest you, read Article 268 of the Constitution. In they'll, 30 seconds, wrap up this they'll, they'll, in They will come back to Parliament. Even Article 268 of the Constitution, bauxite is a mineral. They need to satisfy a condition precedent. When we drew their attention, they said, oh, as usual, minority, that we are not there yet. You will come back to us. It requires two thirds majority in parliament to do that. When you can't grant any mineral well, right we granted them to Sino Hydro we granted them without the people of Ghana through parliament <laughs> acting appropriately. We haven't been doing the mining in right. the agreement. Who Thank you. Doing the it's not Sino Hydro. Agreement. So we haven't granted Mr. them Mr. a mineral right. Allow him to answer the question. Who, who is doing the mining in the agreement? I don't know because nothing has been brought to because why okay. Uh, there? okay let so me many. move to you mr Pong. i don't deal with the uh, speculative issues i'm dealing with constitutional and legal right. matters and i'm saying that article 268 imposes an obligation on this government so does it let me in some whether it's a loan or not coming events they cast their shadows we will know and the people of Ghana will better know whether additional burdens will be occasioned by this act of government or not. But I think that the Ghanaian people should uh, dismiss uh, seriatim the argument of government that this is intended to sabotage. To what gain? What's your We've expectation of the in infrastructure. We appreciate, we appreciate, we appreciate that there is an infrastructure deficit. You can even go to my parliamentary debate from the public private policy argument. Two billion US dollars, we've always uh, stated it. Okay. And therefore, 
they should, must come clear that it is a loan. And they are sure that we will okay. support them to borrow. I've given you the example of Bui Hydro Project. Coco I, I asked the question. An, an answer backer. that for me in a heartbeat. Um, what is your expectation of the IMF? This letter that you've written to them. They will respond. And uh, yesterday, my ranking member on finance, who has been very, very supportive, the Honorable uh, Atu Forsen, has demonstrated death, uh, gave me an indication that he has a two-page response from them. I just so they got responded. Back, I just got back from Tamale for Eid, for the Eid al-Adha sacrifice and for Salah. Uh, best regards to all our Muslims. You didn't bring us any meat, but that's not that's not uh, today's, I'm, I'm that's not today's along, conversation. I'm coming along with the, the, a ship for you, Dazi. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. So you, you don't know the content of that two-page response? I haven't read okay. it uh, okay. yet. So uh, we'll, 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 we'll come we, back we, for those we, further and better particulars. We stand by. So Patriots, patriotic uh, MPP, where, where, where was patriotism? Thank you, Mr. Idrisu. Thank you, Mr. Idrisu. Let me go to Kojo Opo and Chroma here. Yes, so the specific, it seems like international analysts from different um, uh, organizations all mm -hmm. see these arrangements as loans. In no, fact, no, 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 um, no, 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 no. Um, I have seen you advice. Have read, you have read quotes from organizations that says that China, exactly um, which China, is what i have said no, no, that china oh, gives loans to africa in various kinds this particular transaction as i've explained to you is captured in black and white in the master project support agreement that they will build two billion dollars worth of all of this infrastructure and i'll take you through some of them for us but that's and not the first time an arrangement like this is exchange, being made here in ghana have you seen any such i'm not talking about here in ghana i'm telling you that here in ghana there's a first i'm not talking about here in there's ghana. a first arrangement of this kind that we are structuring with china hydro and in exchange we are giving Boy, them contract. now um uh, haruna mentions um arrangement fees interest payments Boy, etc. i i need to make that point clearly those are the obligations of sino hydro to their financing partners they are raising their money at those costs, those arrangement fees, to develop this infrastructure for us. We were in Parliament when the Parliament of Ghana passed a bill to set up a bauxite authority for Ghana. It is that bauxite authority that will eventually be given mineral rights. Yes, you are right under Article 268. When that time comes, we haven't gotten there. Today where we are is a structure between government of Ghana and Sino Hydro in which we are undertaking that they will do X for us and we'll pay them back with Y. Let me give you a bit of a historical context. If you take the last decade, mining and quarrying alone, we have mined um, uh, uh, mining and quarrying alone to the tune of about 56 billion Ghana cities. If you look through our budget, you cannot find 56 billion Ghana cities worth of infrastructure development. You know why? Because the old resource management regime is such that you find some company that comes to dig up the resources. They'll pay you some royalties, some income tax, and that's it. It will go drop in your big national budget. It's going to other items. You cannot even uh, correspond it with infrastructure development, even from the communities where these minerals are being dug from. That is the principle behind this resource module, which says that swap your resources for actual infrastructure there on the ground that we can all see and attest to. Now, the minority, as I mentioned to you, initially tried to create the impression that they were only asking for information. I've demonstrated to you in what they have written. They, they're calling this thing an illegality. They are calling this thing a misguided barter agreement. And their expectation is not just a response Point from the IMF. But I have just read it to you. Misguided, article yes. 10. Uh, no, Article 10. Um, uh, read it, read it. Following from Paragraph 7 and 8, uh -huh. we we'll gladly want to draw the attention of the Honorable Minister to the okay. fact that his so-called barter agreement is a loan and must be treated as such. Hence, right. he will be engaging in an illegality if he attempts to do otherwise. Final question. Essentially, no, I'm before coming. We don't have to rush this. Yeah, well, Daniel, we, we don't have, have to rush this. We have a few we don't constraints have to that rush we are let's, aware of. Let's, let's take our time and go through it for all of our stakeholders to understand it. So what they are doing is not an effort just to ask for answers. Because as I've explained, if they want answers, we have the answers here. So provide the answers. But I'm just giving you the answers. I'm just giving you the answers. And what they are really doing, what they are really doing, is telling the people of these beneficiary communities that they object to the structure which will provide them their roots. That's what they are doing. And that's why in Parliament we reminded them that the people in Cape Coast will be looking at their objection to our strategy to build the roots of Cape Coast. 
He is an MP from the Northern region. Tamale, Tamale interchange, Tamale interchange that we are seeking to build. I haven't said it. I'm saying that the people will take note. Mr. Fokuma, you made that point. Let me make my point. Gentlemen, please. The people will take note. The people... Okay, okay, gentlemen, please. Please please give me a moment. I have turned the mics off. Let's let's have some... Let, let's let's have some comments. Thank you very much. Mr. Fokuma, what's your expectation as government? of the IMF in response as a response we have a track record of open clear negotiations with the fund you recall when the previous administration first of all took us under the ECF program and uh, signed up to some conditions when we came back we've been able to even at very difficult times when for example they said they were going to uh, you know classify SLA in a different way we sat with them and explained to them that no you cannot classify it as a new debt and we explain to them because we understand how the fiscal tables are computed. We are clear in our mind. If the fund requests of us clarification on this, we're happy to provide that clarification okay. for them. But I think the big picture for, um, for, for, for us and for everybody to note is that at this time, when this is being consummated, this is the action that our friends but have taken. For posterity you know, will judge them for it. From what you know about this agreement, do you expect oh, the IMF to dismiss it? No. To dismiss the no, no. No, no. Um, questions of no, no. the oh, no. We don't. Okay, you expect them to consider it? I think that's it. I have to Wait, no. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Adrisu, yes, we know you have to go, so just give us a quick comment on this. The collapse of seven banks and the investment, well, the bond of eight billion Ghana cities that uh, government has taken. That's that's been, that's a lot I've for our debt stock. I've been in and out of the country and want to have an informed position and make public what the minority position will be on the matter. Therefore, I can't make any further comment until I'm properly and adequately briefed by my finance group who've been working on it. But our concern is to safeguard jobs, to safeguard the banking sector, to make a meaningful contribution to our national development uh, life. As for posterity, to judge everybody, whether NDC and PP as a government, I agree with whether you. butter or loan, I agree with posterity you. tomorrow. <laughs> Are you aware that Parliament is going to hold a hearing on this matter and it's, be, it's being considered that it will be in camera? Boy, no. Uh, I'm aware that the finance committee is looking into the matter and they'll be guided by... Uh, Do you agree with the position that it should be in camera? Uh, Mr. Mr. Rizu, okay, he's not answering my question. Let me let me come quickly to Mr. Ponkrumah. Mr. Ponkrumah, um, your comments on this banking saga. Before I do that, you asked a question about the effect of this transaction on the average Ghanaian. The effect of this transaction on the average Ghanaian is that the average Ghanaian is going to get infrastructure in many of these communities that Which have you been have mentioned. mentioned. Mm. People are going to get jobs in the process. And the critical thing is that we don't do this by jeopardizing our current fiscal position. That's one key thing that all of us must bear in mind with the current structure that we have developed. Yeah, the banking saga. Um, your comments on how things have unfolded so far. Well, I addressed a press briefing uh, last week, essentially, uh, to make the point that it is a regulated sector. The regulator is taking actions to um, clean up challenges that have been there, legacy challenges that have been there from as far back as 2013, which, um, and I've heard some of the discussions you have done, and you know people are surprised at how the leadership of the regulator at that time was not able to deal with it. The current leadership of the regulator, the same Bank of Ghana, but the current leadership has taken the bold steps of moving into, uh, first of all, protect depositors funds, about 10 million depositors, we are told. And uh, the government has backed that action by underwriting the first part of it, which is the provision of about 8 billion Ghana cities to be used in um, protecting depositors' funds so that people don't lose their monies. That is the first and important exercise to conduct. Second, to ensure that we put in place mechanisms that leave us with a robust, well-regulated, well-functioning financial services sector. And then, of course, subsequently, if it is found that any persons have been involved in criminality, there are laws and there are institutions that will deal with um, uh, that right. as well. So from the point of view of government, as we mentioned last week, that's where we are now. But you're in the Finance Committee of Parliament, which will be taking a look at this. Yeah. Do you agree with the position that those hearings should be in, in private? My understanding of um, the committee's decision, I was not there. You know, it came around the time when my um, uh, nomination was announced and um, a transition process started. So I was not there at the meeting. But my understanding of um, the committee's meeting and proceedings is that they would want to um, uh, go deeper into some matters beyond the ones that um, have been already may I say, leaked or put out in the public domain. And they would want to do so in a contained manner and then subsequently publish whatever reports that um, mm. have to be published the, or the, put, put, put before plenary. And I think that it is um, a decision that is not untoward.
the CDD's doctor Koja Asante says that if we are going to oh, have these like hearings it. in private, we might as well not have them because there are other state institutions looking into them. And as elected officials, you must be seen to be representing and letting your people know what the real issues are. I think that oh, we will like have it. to wait and see the outcome of that uh, I mean, I say hearing and see the report they come out with before we can make judgment on whether or not it was worth holding it in camera. Thank you very much, Kojo Pongkoma, for joining us. He's Information Minister oh, Desi. I almost said Deputy Information Minister. Well, I'm Deputy Information Minister. You're, you're still, okay, you're Deputy Information Minister now. Yes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Thank you very, very much. It's eight minutes past nine on a super morning show on Joy, 99.7 FM. We still have a lot to bring you on the show. Uh, my surprise guests have brought us to eight minutes past nine. We will take these important messages when we go. When we come back, we will be taking you to um, Achim Ebuakwa, where uh, former presidents Asante Hini Otunfo said to the second and a number of other key individuals um, are making a historic visit to Chebi. Uh, Otun Fawcett, who's the second in particular, is making a historic visit to Chebi as a guest of honor at a derba being hosted by Ochihine Osaji for Amwintia for a pinning to climax the 75th anniversary of the late king of Achim Ebuaka traditional area, Nanase Uforiata. Um, we'll be back to deal with that and other matters, including the playback of what happened at the Denkwa Institute Forum yesterday. Boy,